Have you ever had a difficult problem to solve? I mean like a really difficult problem to solve. Well, here in Daniel chapter 2, we're going to see Nebuchadnezzar, the king, have a dream. And he commands his wise men to come and interpret it. And we're not going to read all of chapter 2 today because it would be too long for one video. But we're, we're going to start this chapter and we're going to look at how there were some men that were tasked with interpreting the impossible, solving a mystery, if you will. And this mystery is one that no human can solve. It was one that God alone had to reveal, or else literally death was at stake for some men. Let's dive into chapter 2 and see what happened. In the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams. His spirit was troubled and his sleep left him. Then the king commanded the magicians, the enchanters, the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans to be summoned to tell the king his dreams. So they came in and stood before the king. And the king said to them, I had a dream and my spirit is troubled to know the dream. And the Chaldeans said to the king in Aramaic, O king, live forever. Tell your servants the dream and we will show you the interpretation. Verse 5, the king answered and said to the Chaldeans, The word from me is firm. If you do not make known to me the dream and its interpretation, you shall be torn from limb to limb and your houses shall be laid in ruins. But if you show me the dream and its interpretation, you shall receive from me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and its interpretation. Verse 7, they answered a second time and said, Let the king tell his servants the dream, and then we will show you its interpretation. The king answered and said, I know with certainty that you are trying to gain time, because you see that the word from me is firm. If you do not make the dream known to me, there is but one sentence for you. You have agreed to speak lying and corrupt words before me till the times change. Therefore, tell me the dream, and I will know that you can show me its interpretation. And the Chaldeans answered the king and said, There is not a man on earth who can meet the king's demand, for no great and powerful king has asked such a thing of any magician or enchanter or Chaldean. The thing the king asks is difficult, and no one can show it to the king except the gods, whose dwelling is not with flesh. Because of this, verse 12, the king was angry and very furious, and commanded that all the wise men of Babylon be destroyed. So the decree went out, but the wise men were about to be killed, and they sought Daniel and his companions to kill them. Now let's stop right there. Nebuchadnezzar has a dream. He has a dream, but he doesn't want to tell it to the sorcerers, the diviners, the enchanters, the wise men of the land. He wants them to tell him the dream and what it means. Why? Because he, he realizes something here. He makes a comment that, well, if I tell you the dream, I'm putting it in my own words, paraphrasing it. He says, if I tell you my own dream, then you're going to lie to me and tell me it's all about good things until the times change. In other words, you're going to tell me what I want to hear. I want to know that you are telling me the truth. Therefore, here's how I'm going to test you. You have to not only tell me my dream without me telling it to you, but you have to also interpret for me. If you can tell him a dream that he never told you about, then it had to be revealed to you some supernatural way. Your interpretation should then be correct if you can supernaturally tell him the very dream that he had. Well, this decree goes out. And we saw there at the end of verse 13 that the, the king is planning to kill all the wise men, all these people, the enchanters and diviners. And some of the wise men in his kingdom were Daniel. And Daniel's three friends. And these guys are now faced with a decision as well of, well, what are we going to do? The king is also saying the same thing to them. They're lumped in with who's going to get killed. So I don't know how you would respond 
But put ourselves here for a moment. If you were in Daniel's shoes, what would you do? I don't know. I'd probably be thinking, oh, I'm going to die. You know, this is all over. It's silly. It's crazy. Maybe I would be happy. You know, I'm going to see the Lord soon. But I probably wouldn't think to do what Daniel did. At least I don't think it would be my first response. But what a great example and encouragement we have from Daniel. Because what he does is very amazing. A similar thing to what he does before that we saw with the meat. So let's see how Daniel responds. Verse 14. Then Daniel replied with prudence. Okay, He resp responds with wisdom and discretion to Arioch, the captain of the chief's guard, who had gone out to kill the wise men of Babylon. He declared to Arioch, the king's captain, why is the decree of the king so urgent? Why are they going to kill us so quick? Then Arioch made the matter known to Daniel. And Daniel went in and requested the king to appoint him a time. He asked for a deadline. That he might show the interpretation to the king. So this is what Daniel does. Daniel goes, first of all, and he wisely responds. His life is at stake. His friends' lives are at stake as well. He wisely goes to the guy that's been sent out to kill him and says, Hey, what's going on here? Why is this such an urgent thing? Why is the king you know, so angry about this? And he requests from the king a time. He asks for a deadline to show the interpretation. And the next thing Daniel does in verse 17 is, is notice that he prudently responds when it first happens. He asks for a timeline. He, he, he asks wisely. And then notice what he does immediately after he kind of clarifies what's going on with his ungodly leader, with his king, with his boss, if you will. Verse 17, then Daniel went to his house. He went home. And he made the matter known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions. Now, it's interesting here that Daniel and his three friends were not present when all the wise men, magicians, and sorcerers were called. You know, they, we know that Daniel and his uh, friends were considered wise men. And they were put um, to be on the king's council. But they had not been told the matter yet. Daniel had been given the details. He lets his friends know. So he tells his companions, verse 18, and look what Daniel also tells them. And told them. Okay, Daniel's telling them. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, their, uh, their pagan names, their Jewish names are Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah. Well, here's what it says. And told them to seek mercy from the God of heaven, to plead God's mercy concerning this mystery so that Daniel and his companions might not be destroyed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then the mystery was revealed to Daniel in vision of the night. So they immediately go to prayer. God gives Daniel a vision at night. And what does Daniel immediately do? He blesses God. And Daniel answered and said, this is amazing what he says here in verses 20 through 23. This could be a whole sermon. Blessed be the name of God forever and ever. To whom belong wisdom and insight? Wisdom and insight and might do not belong to people. They ultimately and always belong to God. He changes the times and the seasons. He removes and set up kings. I'm going to stop right here. We're going to pick up here next time. Because what Daniel's response is, is he blesses God and praises God for being the source of everything is amazing. And there's a lot to dig in here. But look at how Daniel responded. Literally, his life was in danger. He responds with wisdom. He goes to God in prayer, seeking God's mercy. He doesn't uh, say, I have a right to know God. Just save my life because I don't want to die. No, he pleads for God's mercy that he and his friends would be spared, that they could know this mystery and make known to the king the interpretation. And we're going to see as we go throughout this whole story that Daniel remains humble remains wise and, and has what's termed later on in the very book of Daniel an excellent spirit. Daniel was such an excellent example for us and there's a lot we can learn from his example and how we should respond to what goes on in our lives. And next time we'll look at 
this passage of how Daniel blesses the Lord's name and glorifies God throughout all that's going on.